here, and uh, I am here with the uh, Medieval Shop Hillside Forge Damascus Viking Sword. That's a beautiful sword. Uh, it has a classic style pommel. Uh, it's got a close, tight, all steel, Damascus steel, like wood steel, cross guard and uh, pommel or quillions. They're sharp, they're small, it's a compact handle. It's wire wrapped. So uh, my hands are quite calloused. I'm gonna be using it today without a glove. But uh, if you're using it, I would suggest maybe using a glove, a light glove of some sort, or a mitt. I uh, love the blade design. You can see the intricate uh, uh, braiding of the metal, where it's actually braided together and then hammered out, which Woots steel is a misconception. I say, say it's not, Woots is not a misconception, but Damascus is a misconception. Woots is the actual type of steel that it is. And it's not quite pattern welding. It came from Woots in ingots that were made in India. They were made uh, as early as the third century in India and uh, from Sri Lanka and imported to the Middle East. That's how the Vikings would have encountered it and the Europeans would have encountered it. And apparently they thought it looked like uh, either a domestic, Damascus fabric and named it after that because of the pattern in the blade. Or uh, they may have thought it was from Damascus. It might have been a mis misunderstanding, but I'm, I'm more willing to think that they might have thought it was a fabric, you know, that looked more like the fabric and nicknamed it because of that. But it's a beautiful design. Uh, it has a uh, microscopic edge that's very saw-like due to the different types of steel used to uh, braid and then hammer out. And you see a beautiful design here. I mean, it's just it's beautiful. It's classic. For what, uh, you have to be very careful. It's sharp. The uh, fuller. The tie, uh, it's a 10th century blade and a beautiful, beautiful handle. I think it's type S pommel, I'm not sure. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with it. I'm gonna be doing some different uh, cuts. I may even use the back edge because it's got a lot of blade heft to it. It's blade heavy, but it's a beautiful design. I think it'll work great with the cast blow that we've done in some other videos. So we're gonna get started and see what we can do with this. All right, I'm here with the Woot Steel the Damascus Blade from Medieval Shop. Uh, it has an S uh, type pommel, I believe, that's what it's called. It's like an early T-shaped or a transitional or a migrational era of pommel, meaning it's got a tight grip and a small set of quillion. But the nice thing about this one, it's got a nice wedge shape, so it, it, it uh, rides the hand easily where you don't hit yourself with it, which if you can use it right any way you're not going to. But it allows for the cast blow, which we've done a video on that, where you let the blade do the work. So it's not even the footwork so much as you just stand there and let the blade cast out and cut. And that's what we're going to talk about real quick. We're going to, I think that this was designed to be used with a shield or in mounted combat, this specific hilt design. Not so much for sword fencing, although one could use it to parry with, with this small aquillion uh, and this tight of handguard. I don't think that's what it was used for. But anyway, we'll test that out too in a second. Let's go ahead and see how it cuts. Beautiful cut. Nice. Ooh, Sweet. Beautiful. Gorgeous Clean cut. Through. Oh. Nice. That was a cut. I think it cut through. Normally not used that way, a nice stepping cut worked quite well with it. Let's see what else it can do. Oh, that was beautiful. Not bad for such a small sword, it, it, worked, it worked wonderful. All right, I'm going to use a technique where I used the back of the sword to cut with, and I'm going to see if I can do any damage to the back head. I've heard lots of different stories about the back edge having a lot less power on one-handers. It's quite, quite a bit of blade heft or weight to the blade. So I'm going to see if I can get a good hit on the back of the skull and actually damage the head better than I killed it. Of course, this would be an unarmed head, so let's see how this takes place here. I don't know, but uh, I would say that was a kill. This would help go around the shield. But let's pull this out and see what we got here. Let's do a lot of ballistics gel and into the skull. It has a lot more gel on it than it should, a lot more than you have on human flesh, but it won't clean it. And we've got blood leaking. 
How do we do on that one? Way, Way better. Oh, yeah. That's going straight into the skull. Oh, that was gruesome. These Brutal. aren't penetrating the skull. They're not doing what we're used to, so let's see what we can do with that. We're just checking the lethality of them. Ah! Ooh, I think that went clean in. Yeah, that is nasty. Beautiful. Nice. Ah! Ooh, that was nasty. We have much little, probably no blood there, but you can see the cut we got in the skull. Not bad at all. Nice. Sorry, I got tired of that being up there. <laughs> you crowned him. <laughs> yeah. All right, like we brutal. normally do, we can heal him here real quick. Boop. Lay it on of hands. You're healed. You're now healed, my lord. Look, yeah. See, that's how, how people always see it in, in games. That's how it works. And now he's fine. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, of course, I knocked the piece off. I thought that was a pretty decal. Sad, he was healed too. Nice. Yeah, beautiful edge, and it's still retaining a nice edge like that after the cutting we just did. Blade's still intact, good shape, the handle held up well. Uh, I did some back edge cuts because they're controversial, or what some people call in the SCA wrap shots, or they also use them in uh, saber sometimes with the the short edge up here at the tip. So yeah, so they do use them, and uh, it was a test to see what they would do. Uh, it doesn't have as much power one-handed as you would expect, like we have way more with the claymore, but it was still impressive. We went into the bone. We actually went through a lot of gel and into the bone. That was impressive. Uh, the way it cut the large bottle. I opted at the last there to try a large bottle instead of some little bottles that we normally cut. And for the heft in this blade, considering it's not extremely long, I'd slice clean through just so it would have been a two-hander or a uh, longer blade that's more apt to do that. Uh, I think it cut beautifully today and wonderfully. I just think it, with this specific hilt design, you're going to go with this one, is a Viking Age or Migration Age hilt. It's close. Uh, it's more of a casting type sword. It's great for uh, uh, cavalry, horseback, or to be used with a large shield. Uh, it could be used for sword fencing. It's durable enough, most certainly, but uh, I don't think the hilt was designed for that. I guess you're trying to hold it in this type of grip and use it with a uh, buckler. This is not really what you want. It's not a later century sword. It's not, it hasn't progressed to that design yet. I agree with Roland on that. But it's a beautiful sword. Uh, if you're interested in this, be sure and hit up Medieval Shop for it. He has it on his page uh, at a nice, affordable price. Uh, if you like our videos, be sure and subscribe to our channel. Tell people about us. Also, like our video, give us a comment down below. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. That's Thane and, uh, Thane, our, uh, Brandon Elgram's Well of Remembrance. Uh, you can uh, like us there on that page. If you want to enlist in our boat crew, uh, that is the uh, Thane Thrand YouTube boat crew. And it's a private group on Facebook. You can go ahead and uh, send us a request there. And right, and uh, on that, you just type it into the search engine, if I'm not mistaken, on Facebook, and you'll find the boat crew, and you can ask to join, and uh, either Thrand or I'll let you in. Yeah, or look for groups. You can look for it under groups. Look that's it, look for groups. You'll find right. that as well just by putting Thrand in. We've had a lot of questions about how to get in, so that's how you get in. Look well, for under groups. You'll get exclusive content. You'll get... Uh, You'll get uh, what's upcoming next. You'll get to input in the next videos what we do, give us ideas, uh, suggestions, and that's a good place to do that. Also, if you want to help us out, you can go by patreon.com uh, slash thrand and uh, donate there. Uh, if you'd like to donate directly to us more personally, you can go through PayPal, and that's thanethrand at yahoo.com is the PayPal ID. And at that same uh, email address, you can send me a suggestion of what you wanted done with the money or send us a message with the money to let us know what you'd like to see done. Because if we don't know, then we can't really do and cater to you what we'd like to do for you. If we can do it, we'd more than certainly like to do exactly what you want to see us do, if it's at all possible by our means. And if providing the donation will actually cover most of it if we can pull it off. Uh, but I hope you all enjoyed it, uh, enjoyed the episode. Be sure and check this out, uh, check this sword out online and uh, tell us what you think about it down below. Barbell.
Farewell.